This is the legendary Pauley Pavilion on the campus of UCLA in Westwood, where tonight, Prime Ticket brings you another in our series of Road to Soul events. Welcome to a very special international sports exhibition as we get set to bring you the Vidal Sassoon USA USSR Gymnastic Summit. Good evening, I'm Tom Kelly, and indeed it's a pleasure to welcome you to a very special evening of entertainment, gymnastics, the best in the world, the USSR gymnastics team and the United States of America gymnastics team. To provide the expertise on our telecast, we've enlisted the services of a gold medal winner from the 1984 gymnastics team performed right here in this building at Pauley Pavilion, Peter Vidmar. Nice memories here, Peter. Uh, huh? It's great to be back. It really is, Tom. I said the Russians were the best in the world. I hope I haven't misled anybody. No, you certainly haven't. The Soviet team is probably the best team in the world, both men and women. They're very hungry for the 1988 Olympics, and they're really looking forward to these games because it's been a long time since they competed in the Olympics. In uh, Seoul this year, in 88, it'll be the first time in 12 years the United States and the Russians have met in athletic competition, but while the countries haven't met in all forms, the gymnasts have met on an almost regular basis, haven't they? Yeah, and it started back in 1983. That was my first competition competing for the USA uh, against the Soviets, and uh, they didn't send their best team, and we ended up winning that competition, so they're hungry. They send the best team every time now, so the top guns are here, and uh, it's happened about every other year now since uh, 1983. So we're going to see some great routines. What the benefit can this United States team have in a, going against the Russians if indeed they are the best. Kind of a measuring stick to see where they stand? It really is. It's an indicator. We kind of set the Soviets up as our standard and from there then we try to see where we stand as a team. I think that uh, we've closed the gap in the last few years and that finally we're going to be ready to, to do very well in 1988. I should remind our audience that there is no scoring kept in this. This is strictly an exhibition. But you are going to see the best in the world. The Russians, and we'll show you just a few of the names that are going to be taking part. As you see down the bottom of that page, Scott Johnson and Tim Daggett, the only two members of the 84 team still in competition. That's right. Uh, most of the team is retired, including myself, but uh, Scott's doing very well. He's healthy, he's working hard, and Tim Daggett's overcoming a very serious injury. He has a slight chance still to make that team, and I think he, he could do it if he just gets that leg healthy. We'll be talking more about the United States team as it'll be comprised, and we'll pick Peter's uh, brain a little bit to find out who's going to be on it, who could make it. That'll be in August coming up. More conversation later on that. Also on the program tonight, you're going to see the darling of the 84 games, Mary Lou Rutten. It promises to be an exciting program. We thank you for joining us. Showtime indeed. Gymnastics at its best coming your way after we pause for this important message. Ladies and gentlemen, our show begins in one minute. We would like to remind you, smoking is not permitted in the seating areas of Pauley Pavilion. If you wish to smoke, you may do so in the tunnel exit areas. Be sure to stop by the concession area on the concourse level for your favorite food or beverage. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, food and beverages are not permitted on the arena level. Thank you for your cooperation. A reminder that videotaping of this event is prohibited without the express written consent of the United States Gymnastics Federation. We would also caution that you not use flash when taking pictures. Take all the pictures you would like, but please do not use flash for the safety of our athletes. Thank you.
and gentlemen, the United States Gymnastics Federation presents the Vidal Sassoon USA USSR Gymnastics Summit. Once again, the gymnasts of the world are working toward the Olympic Games coming in September. And no gymnast can forget the excitement of the 1984 Olympic Games held right here in Pauley Pavilion three years and nine months ago. But a most exciting event is happening here today. We are back together with our friends and competitors from the Soviet Union. We welcome these many-time world champions back to America. The Brotherhood of Gymnastics is complete, and our athletes and coaches are working together to build upon the ideals of sport. We are proud to present the finest athletes in the world and their world-class performances. Would you now welcome the athletes of the Soviet Union and the United States of America. American Cup bronze medalist Shelley Stack. On horizontal bar, 1985 national champion Brian Babcock. On floor exercise, number three man in the USA gymnastics, Wes Suter. On uneven bars, last year's USA USSR silver all around medalist Natalia Lashenova. At pommel horse, three time USA national team member John Omori. On balance beam, the seventh all around in 1987 USA championships, Miss Stacy Gunthorpe. Still rings, USA national team member and NC2A athlete from UCLA, Mike Chaplin. At floor exercise on her third trip to the United States, Soviet Union's Natalia Frolova. Parallel bars, three-time USA team member, Mike Rice. On horizontal bar, the seventh all-around of the USA national team, NC2A, and UCLA's Curtis Holdsworth. On floor exercise, American Cup silver medalist, Soviet national team member, Igor Korochinsky. Uneven bars, two-time USA team member and the highest American finisher in the world championships, Rhonda Fain. The number four all-around gymnast in the United States, NC2A All-American, Tom Schlesinger. Balance Beam, the number one gymnast in the Soviet Union, the beautiful Olga Strasheva. On still rings, the number three gymnast in the Soviet Union, world team member, Valery Lukin. 
exercise from Allentown, Pennsylvania, American champion Hope Spivey. At parallel bars, NC2A All-American from Nebraska, Kevin Davis. On horizontal bar now from Siberia, six-time Soviet national team member Alexei Tikonki. From Los Angeles, Pan American Games gold medalist Charles Lakes. On the uneven bars, world silver and bronze medalist Svetlana Boginskaya. World championship team member from the Soviet Union on pommel horse Vladimir Novikov. At balance beam, Pan American Games gold medal champion Sabrina Marr. Still rings the current USA champion and 1984 Olympic gold medalist Scott Johnson. At floor exercise, the number four athlete in the Soviet Union, Oksana Omilianchik. Parallel bars on his ninth visit to the United States, Soviet silver medalist and world gold medalist Vladimir Artyomov. At horizontal bar, the man, 1986 championships of the USA silver medalist, Dan Hayden. On floor exercise, two-time world champion, Yuri Korolev. At uneven bars, Pan Am gold medalist, Melissa Marlowe. Ladies and gentlemen, making his comeback after injury, 1984 Olympic gold medalist at Pommel Horse, Tim Davis! <laughs> On balance beam, the 1985 world champion, Yelena Shushunova! Still rings, two-time, and the current world champion, Dmitry Bilozerchev. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to open our show, we've invited one of your hometown favorites into the star position, a standout on the UCLA team with a big future awaiting him. Please welcome to Still Rings, UCLA's own Mike Chaplin. There you see the statistics on Chaplin. He is a junior at UCLA and the still rings. He's 5'3", 128 pounds. Briggs is certainly one of Mike's best events. He's very powerful and strong. That was a plan going down to an iron cross. Back up to an L. Press to a handstand, one of the required moves. Back up rise. Soviet gymnastics team and a very special exhibition they're going to be putting on. Here is the whole team at their Soviet women's team. Six strong. They always put on this little group routine when they have an exhibition. It's really kind of nice because this is not an official gymnastics event. You know, I watched them uh, rehearsing it earlier and uh, it's cute. It's a very cute oh, little yeah. exhibition. This is a real crowd pleaser. This is something different. You don't see this in competition. This is what's nice about this exhibition format. And they'll do it with precision and style. Make sure of that. You bet. that the uniforms they're wearing all different kind of reflect the personalities of the ladies too I would think absolutely Thank you. 
they're just great dancers. They, they emphasize that so much. Even the men have some substantial back, uh, background in dance.
music. This is just the beginning. Wait till we see the regular performances on floor exercise. You know, the, the, the women now are tumbling uh, easily as well as the men were. In the past, the men were doing more difficult tumbling skills, but there really is no difference between the women and the men at this time. There you are, the Soviet women gymnasts in a very special routine and well received. We'll be back with more of this meeting between the Russians and the United States, but first this message. The Moscow News Invitational, the USA Soviet competition. And we return to the USA-USSR Gymnastic Summit. We go to the Pommel Horse, and it's going to be Valery Lyukin from the Russian team. And next team. was a member of the gold medal world championship team. It was a very good world year. championships, first He's team, the only gymnast 1987. He's triple back on floor exercise. European He's championships, he was first in the all around in 1987. The Yukon's really the rising star right now. He has probably uh, the most difficult skills almost on every event in gymnastics. He's just unbelievable. He's, He's 21 and 5'5", five five, and here he is on the pommel He's not weak in anything. There's his flares traveling across the horse, doing some counter rotations called spindles in flare. Extremely difficult. And he moves across the horse in the longitudinal direction, touching all areas of the horse. That's a requirement for competition. You have to work every end of it, don't you? Every inch of it. Yep, up and down. Oh, Bill, you hit the horse. That's a mistake. <laughs> no, he didn't plan on that happening. Here's a flare. Going up for his dismount. The whole routine about 30 seconds, Peter. That's huh? right. Including the slight bobble in there. Not very long. That would have been a big mistake, but you know, they're having fun out here. He's throwing all the big tricks. Valery Lyukin. One of the important members of that Let's see what happens here when he hits his leg. This is a counter rotation on one pommel. His right hand, see how low his right hand is on that pommel. He just bangs right into the horse. Well, now we go to the high bar, and here's Vladimir Novikov of the Soviet team. I call Novikov their, their go for it man. He basically just takes every trick in the book, every trick that he can do, and he throws it. That's a reverse act, immediate reverse act, immediate flyaway half. Incredibly difficult. Three release moves in a row. This is his second trip to the United States. He's been in gymnastics for 10 years. And I'm going to get ready for his dismount now. A triple back flip. He seemed to be in the air forever. Beautiful day. We move now to floor exercise. Okay, let's take a look at this dismount. It's a triple backflip. Three flips before hitting the ground. There's one, there's two, three. Opens up a little higher than he thought, so it kind of threw his back down. He took a step. Next up, young lady, Lisa Panzeroni. She's 15. This is Lisa Panzeroni. As you can see, 5 feet 1 inches tall and 82 pounds, <laughs> just 15. But you know, that's the norm. All of the best girls in the country tend to be in high school. Now, there's always exceptions. We had Kathy Johnson competing at the age of 24 and winning two medals in the Olympics, but most of the girls tend to be young. Like uh, the women swimmers, very young. Absolutely. It's your first tumbling pass, a round off back handspring, full in back out. Very difficult. They're not holding back. This is an exhibition, but they're going for it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lisa Panzeroni. Miss Lisa Panzeroni. Columbus, Ohio, now living in Allentown, PA. We go now to the uh, parallel bars. Parallel bars, and this performer from the United States team, this is Mike Rice. He's out of Oklahoma University. Likes motorcycles and likes racing. NCAA All-American performer is Mike Rice. Mike's very powerful. In the USA USSR dual meet, he had a very, very good routine on the parallel bars. This is one of his best events. It's an underbar swing, peach basket to a straddle cut. Most of the skills on parallel bars will occur from the handstand. That's called a stutz. A front up rise. Right up to a handstand. This trick is called a Healy twirl. A little different. He straddles his legs there in the pirouette. Just add a little extra touch to it. It's a back toss. Now he's going to sit up for his dismount. A double back step. A twirl step. That's a very good routine. Very nice indeed. Mike Price from Garden City, Kansas, of the United States team. Back to the... Um, now take a look at this dismount. This is a double tuck salto. Right off the bar goes sideways to clear the rails. Go back, just a little step. In competition, that'd be an induction. Elena Shevchenko now, and we go to the balance beam. Only four inches across. She's 16. 5'2 and 92 pounds. Elena is really one of the most uh, powerful gymnasts. She was a little bit inconsistent in the dual meet competition. And when that happens, when they go on to the exhibition, they take it a little bit more seriously, and it's very important for them to hit their routine successfully. She's not going to fool around up there. Then again, who would when it's only four inches wide? The oh. cashing back layout. And she was just off, a little bit crooked. This camera angle shows you how narrow that beam is, and the margin of error is just so slight. Very pretty young lady. She is. Red hair. Classic features. And they use their dance so well. Everybody kind of hopes they can just get out of the way because it's so tough. You want to make it without falling off. <laughs> Beautiful double back dismount. Elena Shevchenko, the Soviet Union. Elena Shevchenko. That slight bobble she had in the middle of the routine, I'm Broken sure, upset her a little bit. Yeah. We'll take a look at that. This is a back handspring, back layout, and she's a little bit off to the right, and she can't quite hold on and just jumps off. This is John Amore. From the University of Arizona, though his hometown is Los Angeles. 24 years old, 5'4". John's a real hard worker, very, very consistent gymnast. It's a peach straddle cut right to a V and presses up to a handstand. Peter, you were telling me earlier that every performer has to be an all-round gymnast. No longer do uh, you get by competing in one event that you must be able to perform them all. That's right. Yeah. But each requires additional or, or different strengths, does it not? That's right. In American collegiate competition, they're allowed to have specialists, gymnasts that may only do one event. Uh, but in international competition, you have to do all six events for men and all four events for women. So you have to be very well-rounded. I would imagine with that thought in mind, then, that most uh, collegiate coaches, when they go out and recruit, actually go out and recruit the all-round performer, don't they? Oh, absolutely, because uh, they don't want to get just one good score. They want to get six good scores, so they want a gymnast that's very, very uh, good on six events. We turn next to uh, Stacy uh, Gunnithorpe. She's a 17-year-old from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Here she is with the floor exercises. Stacy's a very powerful gymnast in floor exercise. Her tumbling skills are just excellent.
remind you again that this is an exhibition between the United States and the world's best Soviet Union. There are no points for them. I'll tell you right now, so far there would be no points taken off for Stacy. That was a beautiful mount. A full two seat double back flip. This gymnastic summit. The when Russians you say you're the first, we'll yeah. pause for this message. The world, you'll see the light of recognition because in awe, most gymnasts, until his teammate Dima Bilozerchev matched him. Welcome back to Pauly Pavilion, the scene of this gymnastic summit between the Russians and the United States. The Russians, men and women, considered to be the very best in the world. Some of the people you're watching here, undoubtedly, you'll be seeing later this year television coverage from Seoul in the Olympic Games. Next up, Yuri Korolev. He started when he was 10 years old, and he's 25. He's the world champion. In fact, two of the Soviet gymnasts that are here, Korolev and uh, Dmitry Belozerchev, who we'll see later, uh, are the only two gymnasts in the world that have ever won the world all-around title twice. They did it by alternating with each other each time. Krola in the, in the dual meet scored a 10 in this event. It's a beautiful one-arm giant to a one-arm reverse set. It's called a Tukachev, named after one of his teammates a few years ago. Those are inverted giants. Peter, that must be quite a great story. Well, the inverted giant really, what I want is a swing event. To do any of these skills, really requires just a good sense of, of your body. That was a double lag this time, a perfect landing. But it's not nearly uh, as difficult in terms of sheer strength as, for example, the rings or the, or the quick explosive power that you need on floor exercise. Gary Carlisle, and he gets a champion's reception as befitting a two-time world champion. We'll take a look at that dismount. He does a double layout. It's a double back flip with his body stretched. Ladies and gentlemen, that score the board just at the right time. Today, Incredible height, and, and he just zeroes in on the ground. Perfect Williams. landing. You heard a gentleman by the name of Jack Whitaker and a lady by the name of Kathy Now a very Whitaker. special guest here for this gymnastic summit between the United she States. She has her wings on today for this vault. Uh, she does what it. is called a layout Sukahara with a full there. twist. There is the green light. The distance she gets on this particular vault is four years ago. She has two vaults, remember. And Mary Lou became the darling of the gymnastics world. Oh boy. Especially the United States portion. Sure was. In fact, Mary Lou is standing in the spot that she scored that perfect 10 here in Pauley Pavilion. Some of the crowd doesn't know she's here, of course. She's standing down in the air now. And when they ask her to come out, I'm sure. What a moment for American gymnastics. There's Corona. the coach. She's now chief of the United States gymnastics delegation. Ladies and gentlemen, and now the, introduction. the reigning Olympic champion of the 1984 Games, Miss Mary Lou Retton.
vividly in my mind. And being back here in Polly Pavilion, the place where I did win my gold medal, brings back such wonderful, incredible memories for me. It definitely was the highlight of my career. And I want to take this, this time right now to thank America and to thank especially the city of Los Angeles for helping me through those Olympic Games and giving me the support during the Games and of course after the Games. Thank you all so very, very much. Thank you. My life has changed, uh, to say, a little bit after the Games. Um, I owe everything to the sport of gymnastics. I was in the sport for 12 years and I came to it. And one thing I do miss about it, when I'm working out now for the fun, I'm not competing anymore. When I'm working out or when I finish a, a TV commercial or a motivational speech or even a class in college now, I don't have that famous Bella Caroli bear hug to give me that, that extra oomph. That's something I do miss. Hey, anybody out there needs, still need a big bear hug. I hey. certainly do. That's the voice I love and I know. Oh. That is a special moment, really. Ed. He's best. wonderful. He's the best. Thank you very much. Thank you again for your support. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mary Lou Retta. Thank you all. I love you. Well, now we turn to uh, Tom Schlesinger. Schlesinger, excuse me. From the University of Nebraska. As well as being a member of the gold medal team. Currently ranked fourth in the country on P-Bars, Mr. Tom Schlesinger. Hello, Bars. Tom was the NCAA All-Around Champion last year. His team, Nebraska, finally won their NCAA title after a little bit of a drought. They were, they were dominating gymnastics a few years ago, winning for five years in a row. And then for the last three years, they were second place, and in each competition, missed first place by less than a point. And Tom and his teammate, Kevin Davis, who we'll see a little bit later on, are both seniors, and they were hungry for a gold medal and for first place for that NCAA title, and they just won it. His future plans include a medical career. He wants to be a doctor. There's a V-press to a handstand. There's a back toss. Another back toss. Double back dismount. Nice yeah. like bobble there. Schlesinger, beautifully done. A high school freshman from and here's his back toss. It's basically a backflip on the bars from handstand to handstand. Two in a row. For half her life. At Kansas City last year, she won the We go now to the uneven bars and uh, Miss Brandy Johnson, who was 14. Would you please welcome Miss Brandy And as the public address announcer just told the crowd here at Pauley Pavilion, she has been in gymnastics of her life. Seven years devoted to her sport. And there's some high hopes placed on Brandy. She's a very, a very strong and powerful gymnast. That was a reverse heck. She got very high off the bar, but she just peeled off. Didn't quite get her hands on the bar. But did you notice... Either the uh, pretty skill with which she fell and bounced yeah. right back up again. It almost looked as though it were part of the routine. Well, you have to be prepared for things like that. You don't want it to happen, but when it does, you got to break your fall somehow. Beautiful double back this man. Indeed. Randy Johnson from Tallahassee, Florida. And Bella Caroli right there. Now, you've seen the American style of uneven bars. We would like to show you the... This is her air. That's a reverse hecked over the bar. She came down to catch it, but her fingertips were probably just at the very tip of the bar. She needed to get the whole palm of the hand on top of that big piece of wood there. champion has come from 10,000 miles to join us. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Paulette Hantanova. Paulette Hantanova. Something special. I don't have much on this performer. Let me check my notes. See if I can find something on Paulette Hansanova. <laughs> oh, yeah, 
Yes, sir, I have it. <laughs> Out of Murray, Utah, Paulette. That's right. It's actually Paul Hunt, who has a gymnastics club up in Utah, and uh, he's probably the best gymnastics comic in the world. <laughs> now he or she is uh, setting his ball. The whistle from out of the crowd caught Paulette's attention. <laughs> and now the crowd slowly realizing the crowd is more than just another pretty face on the uneven bars. <laughs> He put in oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all his elbows and trapped up there. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably go change his tutu and be yeah. back with another performance. <laughs> That's just as funny every time I see this. You know, I'll be honest with you, he is going to change his leotard after this performance. I, I could talk about that landing, but I, I just don't know what to say. <laughs> well, let's go to the uh, balance beam and Natalia Frolova, 17 years old from the Soviet Union. Now we're going to go a little bit more serious here. This is going to be a, a beautiful performance. National Championship. Russian national champion. And you know what's nice about this exhibition format is that you notice that there's music being played with the balance beam routine. That's not done in competition. Only on floor exercise do you hear music, but it adds a nice touch to it. Beautiful. Back handspring, back ball, step out. Look how high she gets off the beam in her leaps. so easy for the girls to hesitate, not go all out when they do those leaps, because you get so high up there on the way down, you don't want to miss that beam. Well, you'd think the tendency would be to keep a foot as close to that beam as possible, Peter. Absolutely. Only four inches across. Yep. And the way that they learn many of these skills is they might learn it by by doing a skill on a balance beam that's right off the ground, maybe just about an inch off the ground. And then they do it high up. And it doesn't matter how many times you do it in the ground, when you do it up on top the, for the very first time, you get those butterflies. I'm sure. It's probably quite a trick just to convince yourself that you're really just about three inches off the ground when you're <laughs> four feet in the air or five. And here's your dismount. Round off, double back flip. We'll be back with more of this gymnastic summit, the United States and the USSR. But first, this message. His ninth visit to the United States, Vladimir Artyomov. And the reason he has been here so much is that whose favorite city is Disneyland. I think we alluded to the fact that several of the uh, Russian gymnasts think Disneyland USA is the greatest city in this country. And well, it might be. Absolutely. Wouldn't want to argue with him. He's 23, 5 7. Every single year since I am so impressed with him because. His gymnastics is, I believe, technically perfect most of the time. And so when he does a skill, even though it's extremely difficult, he just makes it look so easy. And you almost tend to just sit back and say, boy, I guess that just wasn't that hard. And yet everything he's doing is extremely difficult. recently, he wrapped up two gold medals 
a silver medal, and a bronze. He's a very, very friendly uh, gentleman. Uh, I've competed against him before, and now I see him all the time when he comes to the States. Just a nice person. Team off on the rings. You said that technically he's as good as anybody. Absolutely, ever. no question. That's a kip to an iron cross. Beautiful toe point. He's got perfect form. His body is nice and straight. It's a whip it. Swing to a handstand. This is called an inverted cross. Upside down iron cross. Another whip it. A little dip there as he tried to catch him in the L. Be ready for his dismount. First, back up rise. Extremely straight as he goes back to a handstand. Giant dislocation, double layout. the best in the world. Here's another look at his dismount. This is a double layout, double back flip with his body straight, giant dislocate to wind up, and zeroes in on the ground. Land a little bit straight legged, so he had to take that hop. We turn next to Svetlana Boganskaya. She's 15 years of age. This is her second uh, appearance in USSR USA Gymnastics competition or exhibition. When she mounts with the round on the back handspring, full to some double back flip. Suffered a this fall, he became, for the second time, the 1985 world champion. Was on the great Dimitri Vilosevic. Uh, maybe a um, testament to modern medical science because it was first thought that the leg would have to be amputated. Well, the, the way that this injury happened was unfortunate. He was, unfortunately, was drinking too much, and he drove his father's car into a tree, and that's how he got this injury. He almost ruined his career. Must have been the biggest tree in Russia. Oh, yeah. 42 breaks in the leg. Now he's fabulous in pommel marsh. Watch this flare work. Another one of these spindled flares going in the other direction, similar to what Kevin Davis did. He's just a master on pommel marsh. And that high leg routine, Peter, uh, catches the fancy of the crowd as well. But... Oh, you bet. They just love flares. I think kids love flares because it looks like break dancing. Soviet Union. He still favors that leg. Yes, as you see him uh, walk back toward the dressing room, it looks as though he might just have a slight uh, limp. And yet he still does these incredible tumble yes. skills. He limps off of the floor, does a great floor routine and limps off. It's just amazing. 20 years of age, there he goes again. Next to uh, Oksana Obi-Leonchek. 
and she's a real crowd pleaser. Tiny little gymnast, beautiful Delchev, into a backflip down of a low bar. Now she missed this in the dual meet, but she's just great just there. Free hip circle, and layout double twist. She's 18, this young Russian gymnast, 4'10", 78 pounds, and she's a dynamite. <laughs> now a very special <laughs> exhibition, the West Coast Waves, a rhythmic, uh, rhythmic gymnastics team. They're based in Palos Verdes, Florida, uh, California, excuse me, coached by Julie Barretta and Sandy Conley. This group had uh, two of its members on the USA Junior National Team. USA National Championships. And this sport is a new sport in international competition for many USA athletes. A lot of gymnasts that get involved in artistic gymnastics, which is our sport or my sport, uh, tend to make a transition into rhythmic gymnastics. And it's, a, it's an interesting sport. It's just it's incredibly difficult. It's an Olympic sport. It was competed for medals for the first time here in Pauley Pavilion in 1984 at the Games. And now, because group exhibitions became so popular, now they have group medals for group performances. In addition to the uh, balls, there's also uh, hoops they use as well. That's right, they have a hoop, and uh, I'm sure they don't appreciate this, but we probably most identify that with something that looks like a hula hoop. Yep. They do something much more artistic with it. And uh, they also have a rope. They have clubs, two clubs that they use. And they also have what I think is the most beautiful part of it, the ribbon. And, uh, and yet they only compete four of those events at a time. So, for example, this year they may not be competing with the hoop. And they might be using the ball, the clubs, and, and the ribbon. between, or the exhibition between the Russians and the United States, but first we'll pause for this message. Pauley Pavilion, the scene of the USA USSR Gymnastics Summit. Vidal Sassoon bringing it to you on prime ticket. And the young lady you heard from a few moments ago that thrilled and delighted the crowd here today almost as much as she did back in 1984 when she was the darling of the gymnastics world. Mary Lou Retton is now with Peter Vidmar. Let's find out up close what's happening in the life of Mary Lou. Let's go to Peter. Mary Lou, you're back at the scene of the crime and you got another standing ovation. How did it feel? It felt wonderful, Peter. I think, uh, as you know, it brings back memories of four years ago, which seems just like yesterday to me. Oh, it sure does. 
I have to thank you. I was sitting next to Linda Evans when you landed that, that ball and scored a perfect 10, so it made it just that much more enjoyable. Now, I want you to, uh, we want to know, what have you been doing as of recent? Because, of course, everybody has seen you with the commercials and all the other activities. What are your plans right now for the immediate future? Right now, I'm really concentrating on my broadcasting. I'm going to be commentating the Olympics for NBC. In fact, just returned from Seoul just yesterday. I went over, did some publicity there, and really looked at all the Olympic venues. Everything is looking wonderful for the Games. How, how would you assess USA Gymnastics right now, both the men and especially the women? I really feel that we have relatively young teams right now. I think we're, we're on the road to, to a good, up, upstanding performance at the Olympic Games. It's, we had a little downfall at World Championships, but I think that really put us in our spot and we're working hard right now. Well, Marilee, you've done so much for USA Gymnastics, more than I think you'll ever realize. And everybody wishes you all the best in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tom? All right, thank you. Peter Vidmar visiting with Mary Lou Rutten, and we'll be back with more of this gymnastic summit from Pauley Pavilion. But first, we'll pause for this important message. USSR Gymnastics Summit. I'm Tom Kelly, and the gentleman providing the expertise on our telecast is Peter Vidmar. And Peter is presently, or in a moment or two, will be introduced to the crowd here at Pauley Pavilion. He is, of course, the captain of the 84 gymnastics team, gold medal winner. coverage at our announced position, the great Peter, Peter Vidmar. There's Peter. Stands. Wave to the crowd. Across the way, Dick Enberg. Our show continues now Peter. on a recent high school graduate. Our next <laughs> Wave to Dick Enberg, Peter. There he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoys listening to music and ice cream, too. She's a consistent power on the Soviet national team for the past three years. We uh, continue in the competition. Of our show, the beautiful Natalia Polova. Natalia Polova. There's Dick Enberg. And Bart Connor next to him. You saw Natalia earlier doing um, a routine on the balance beam, and now here she is with a four exercise. I'll listen to this music. Yeah? Dragnet. <laughs> Here's a round off back handspring. Just another back flip. Very powerful She's 17 and even 5 feet at 90 pounds of dynamite. Now, this is a little different. This is not as balletic as some of the other gymnasts from the Soviet Union. The music's different, the beat's different, so as a result, she performs it a lot, a lot differently, much more jazz. She threw a triple twist and landed on, the, on her side. That's a, that's potentially a dangerous landing, but she seems fine. Here's one of her ankles round, the other one not, and the one she landed wrong on, the unwrapped one a moment ago. Yeah, it's um, sometimes that, that wrap she has basically a very tight elastic bandage, which really does very little in terms of support, but it's kind of a psychological thing. Setting up for her final tumbling pass. Round off that case break. Double back. Double step forward. Polova from the Soviet Union. A gentleman we would like to see this little slip on that second tumbling pass. She Unleashed does a round off, back hands break. Of was the man behind the team back hands break, and then she tries a the the layout with three twists. Individual medals. And she comes around and that third twist, and it's just right on her side. She didn't even come close to making it. That's why she stumbled. She's the USA Olympic coach for 1988 from Skaz Don Peters. The Olympic coach for 1988. 
And the mother of our popular Scats gymnast and makes an appearance now. Down, and down and the appearance of Go Yamashiro, who's from Torrance, California. 5'2", 18-year-old gymnast, 105 pounds. Go Yamashiro! And she's been in gymnastics for the past four years. And she trains under Don at the Scats Gymnastics Club, where Don, of course, is the head coach. She's very powerful in this part. Now look at Don standing there, ready to catch her if something could ever happen. That's a front flip. She catches it fine, right over to the low bar. Straddle up. Kip the handstand. Here's where the similar skills that you see in the horizontal bar. There's a Takachev, the reverse heck. Giant. Double back stall. Gary Yamashiro from Florence, California. Second all round in the American Classic. Take a look of at that dismatch. There's a double back salt though. World favorite now from Giants here. She under just a little bit, opens up just a little bit too soon. If she would have kept her knees in, she'd be a little, and bit, her a little bit more even, but she took Once that step. Once again, Paulette Hantanova. So from Gary Yamashiro, Paulette Hantanova. A change of 2-2. Well, I, I noticed a change in Paulette, though. Paulette has shaved her mustache. May have to shave her chest if she's going to continue. Strikes a pose and goes to the balance beam. This is, of course, Paul Hunt, who's gymnastic for teams. With trepidation, he climbed toward the balance beam. He used to have one that said long on it. When he kicked up to a handstand, it said wow. Considerable 
gymnastic skill to be able to do that. We're going to give an exhibition in uh, Sydney, Australia, and I went down with me, and the two gymnasts invited to give the show. And then, uh, he just won the crowd, and the rest of us did here, they just love it. Here's Igor Korobchinsky from the Ukraine. Igor Korobchinsky. He's back in the United States for his second visit. Says he likes everything. <laughs> likes the style of life over here. Floor exercise. He's, he's one of their new top talents. This is the first we've seen of him today. It was a front flip step out round up against a double top. Not a very difficult mount. He can do a lot harder at times. But he just wants to put together, put together a, a good crowd of here. Look at this. These are flares right up to a handstand, back down into flares. And then he turns the other way and spindle flares. Extremely difficult. Boy, they love that. You know, it says his favorite event, Peter, is the pommel horse. And that was almost a pommel horse routine with no horse on Well, absolutely. In fact, of course, that skill was first done on pommel horse. And he, he does the flare on pommel horse as good as anyone in the world. It's a pike straddle side one to one back roll. You've got to be. He's 18. Igor Korobchinsky has got a good future ahead of him. Here's his dismount around the biggest break. Double top dismount. The Soviet Union, Igor Korobchinsky, 18 years old. For the very fun. Igor Korobchinsky exercise. Watch it again. Okay, now this flare sequence is really exciting. This is a flare, first in an international competition by Kurt Thomas of the USA, but he goes up to a handstand, to a straddle pirouette, and he drops his leg right back down and continues on with the flare. But then he starts turning in the opposite direction. It's just incredible. We turn now to this, uh, call your attention, this very pretty red-headed Russian journalist. This is Elena Kirchenova, you saw her earlier on the balance beam. Excuse me, it's Elena Shevchenko. Yes, and uh, from the balance beam now to the uneven bars. Here's your giant sequence. She's right over by the name wrong, Peter. She's still beautiful. Now you bet. Shells <laughs> up to the high bar. Most of the skills, as I said lately, have been done on that top bar, just like they men would do on a horizontal bar. Double back dismount. Elena Shevchenko. Another member of the uh, Soviet uh, gymnastics team coming up, Alexei Tinkoki, the young man from uh, Siberia. Speaks English. You saw him on the uh, floor exercises earlier, and now he'll work on the uh, parallel. He must spend a lot of time in the gym out from the cold, though, because he's a great gymnast. Beautiful front toss. Good, beautiful straight body line. Nice studs. Peach to a straddle cut to an L. Just press to a handstand. My information says here. that he was the first guy to do a round off handstand. Disallowed because it's not going to be dangerous. That's right. Uh, we will see the girls in vaulting do a, what we call a round-off entry vault. Just, and they, they do a round-off onto the board, facing backwards, and do a skill off the horse. We'll describe that later. He did that in men's gymnastics. So you walk up to the center in a different way, so you walk the long ways. And so you, to place your hands is very difficult. And they said, that's just too dangerous. We're going to ban that. And so they have for now. And so as a result, they're going to change the configuration of the horse. In a few years, we're going to have a completely different piece of apparatus. That's Alexei Tinkoki from uh, Russia, from Siberia. We go to Hope Spivey now, member of the United States uh, gymnastics team. She's uh, 16, lives in Allentown, Pennsylvania, originally from Suffolk, Virginia. Four exercise, Hope Spivey. Well, we have certain gymnastics programs that have consistently put out some top, top gymnasts in the women's uh, area. and. The, uh, the scats, of course, at Huntington Beach is strong. Don Peters coaches there. We have Bella Caroli's club in Houston. And Hope comes from a club called the Parkettes in Allentown, Pennsylvania, that has put just time after time to put top, top girls on our national team. Hope's a very strong gymnast. This is a round up by Kansbury, full twisting double back.
making the team. 16 years of age, he was then in gymnastics for eight years. and the United States gymnast, but first we'll pause for this important message. competition. He is the most decorated man in the history of American gymnastics. As a two-time Olympic gold medalist, of a uh, teammate of yours, Peter, from 84, Mark Connor, who I guess is the most bedecked or bemedaled uh, gymnast in the history of uh, the United States. That's right. And a man of many talents, I guess. Mark's career has spanned over uh, three Olympic games. He did 76 in 84, he's on the 18. Mark's going to do a lift on now. Thank you all. We thought we'd have a little fun with our next performance. We're going over to the high bar, and we're going to bring out 10 of the world's best high bar performers to do some spectacular dismounts for you. But what we thought we'd do before that is take this opportunity to give thanks to a gentleman who's done a great deal for our sport, certainly the best announcer in the business, Jan Clare. Thank you, Jan. Let's bring on the 10 best high bar performers in the world for a high bar dismount demonstration. Come on out, guys. Here they come, members of the United States and Soviet teams. This is going to be fun. This is something you don't see in This is going to be a little bit of a, of a dismount contest. Now, as you all know, the high bar is certainly one of the most spectacular of the men's events. And probably the most exciting aspect of that event is the dismount. Now, for the gymnast, it's not only thrilling and spectacular, but it's also one of the most fun things to do in practice. So we thought you might like to sit back and enjoy some of the top high bar performers in the world as they demonstrate and show off a little bit of the most exciting dismounts being done in the world of gymnastics today. First of all, we have Scott Johnson, U.S. National Champion. Suter from the University of Nebraska, NCAA champion. One arm giant swings. And a high layout tuck flyaway. This is just the beginning. Here's John Amore. This is John Amore. U.S. Gymnastics. Here's Charles Lakes. Charles Lakes. Soviet Union, Yuri Polyov. Not only 
a great gymnast, but a father of two. There's a hat. This is Vladimir Artyomov. Artyomov. Very simple. Nice high, fly away with a fall. That is the dismount that the gymnasts will be using in the compulsory exercises in the Olympic Games coming up in Seoul. Vladimir Novikov, a flyaway. See, we're just seeing the simple ones now. The top in just a few moments. You're going to see the guys just uh, stop. So they're going to go for it. This young gymnast is Igor Korobchinsky. Beautiful flyaway fall. I guarantee you that we're going to see some triple backflips here coming out of the show exhibition. Now the gymnasts are going to start going up for some more exciting dismounts. How about that? Tuck open, double fly away. Here goes Scotty Johnson now. Let's see what Scott does. This is Scott Johnson going to perform his optional dismount. Laid out double fly away. Scott Johnson. And now Mike Rice. And now to perform the same dismount, my Oklahoma teammate Mike Rice. Lay out double fly away. As you can see, the gymnasts are starting with basic dismounts and starting to build up to the more difficult. West Suter. Triple flyaway! Triple back up. That was more like three and a half. This is John Amori, and his optional dismount is a double back, but catch this, he'll be doing two twists in the middle of this double back. John Amori. Now this is starting to get good, what do you think? Now Charles never performs until he gets a little encouragement, so help him along a little bit. Charles Lakes! Woo! I mentioned Yuri Korlyov is a father of two. He has a four-year-old boy named Alexei and a one-year-old girl named Yelena. Full twisting double layout. Once again, this is Vladimir Novikov. Triple back. This is Igor Korobchinsky. I know one of their top gymnasts. One, two, three.
This is Fatlana Boganskaya, 15 years old, on the balance beam. First time around, you saw her with the floor exercise. Champs, the two Olympic team members among the girls performing today. Three national time national champion Marina Vinyevsky, national team members Alexandra Feldman, Irina Rubenstein, South Korean champion Song Hee Hong. Four of the girls from this group are qualified for the 88 Olympic trials, and they're coached by Olympic coach Alice Hirsky. Rhythmic gymnastics. This team is also known as the LA Lights, and uh, they have consistently put the top rhythmic gymnasts in the country on the national team.
like watching a circus, Peter. There's yeah, something yeah. going on. You think you're watching a three-ring affair. That's just incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, the Los Angeles School of Gymnastics. Beautifully done. In our golden circle, we would like to introduce to you another member of the 1984 Silver Medal Olympic team. Now attending Arizona State University as a student and undergraduate assistant gymnastics coach, originally from Scats Gymnastics of Huntington Beach, Michelle Ducer. Michelle? Michelle was the youngest gymnast, pardon me, she was the youngest athlete of any sport to compete in the 1984 Olympic Series. Now, we return to the exhibition, and we're going over to the still ranks. Larry, you get it. He's from Kazakhstan, and is the former top still ranks, Valeri Yukin. And the Yukin is the gymnast that everybody looks at for the big tricks because he can really pack a routine with difficulty. He just doesn't have a weakness. It's a back kip right to a planche. It's a strength skill. Now, on ring she had about 40% about strength, about 60% strength. There's an iron cross there. There's an L. Now he presses to a handstand. That's a planche press to a handstand. One of the most difficult presses you can do on our sport. Peter, that iron cross looks like it is the most difficult. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Tom. The, the level of difficulty is ranked in four categories from A to B. A being easiest. A nice little just to lay out this map. An easy this the category, well, the category goes from A to D. D, of course, being the super difficult. B is intermediate. And I across is B difficulty. The intermediate difficulty. So, to get D difficulty, you probably have to do something like an inverted cross, like I showed you earlier, and then press out of it back up to a handstand. It's just so difficult to get that final superior level of difficulty. <laughs> we go to the high bar now. High bar the business from New York. Dan the United States. He has a twin brother, Dennis. Dan is just so exciting on the horizontal bar. Very unusual dismount that takes him over the bar. Not, not on the same side. He'll let go and he'll fly up over the bar. Let go a lot later than someone else normally would in a standard horizontal bar dismount. Unless you think this is a very easy thing to do, he has suffered, among other injuries, crushed vertebrae, a broken leg, and a cock Yeah, Dan has had an unusually difficult career when it comes to injuries. He's had quite a few. He has a twin brother, Dennis, who is just as good a gymnast as Dan is, who's had a lot of other problems, too. It seems when one, health, one is healthy, the other one is injured and vice versa. That was a good, good dismount. Probably would not come as a surprise to you then to find out that he wants to pursue a career in sports medicine. <laughs> he probably feels very qualified. Yeah. You know, he crushed vertebrae, a broken leg, and a back fracture. Well, let's say he's one on his way. So he's got his own dictionary. <laughs> Natalia. Would you please Lashenova. welcome back Miss Natalia Lashenova. You saw her on the balance beam earlier. This diminutive young Russian lass, four foot seven. Now she'll do a floor exercise for you. And she's a joy to watch. <laughs> Yeah. 
once again oh, it's yeah. Balashia. Oh, no question, no question. Now we, let's let's talk about the four inch coiled springs underneath it. So we, we'd like to brag and say it's just the gymnast, yes. <laughs> but it's also the equipment which helps to give him a little bit extra bounce. But Natalia Lashenova was the young lady you just watched with that floor exercise. We go to another member of the Russian team, Vladimir Novikov. You saw him uh, with the high bar. He's now going to uh, perform on the parallel bar. Let's not forget that he's only 17, which is just so young for a male gymnast at this level of competition. Giant yeah, cast. 17, he's been a gymnast for, or in gymnastics for 10 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful front one on the quarter. That's a Healy twirl. Pirouette. A stutz right to a handstand. to a handstand, another back toss, and now for a dismount, a double pike. Very, very good routine. He's got a great future. He's only 17. The second trip to the United States. We'll take a look at that dismount now. This is his back toss. And she plays fourth in the all around among the And a double pike, double back in the pike position. Takes a little bit of a hop at the end. That's a very tough dismount. Now to the you uneven like bars. And the men of the U.S. gymnastics this team. Is, uh, an instrumental entitled to Rise Above, composed by the nominated Los Angeles songwriter James Patrick Dunn. Ladies and gentlemen, Melissa Marlowe. She was born in Belgium. Currently lives in Salt Lake City. She's 16. Four or Missy comes from Salt Lake, which is the host to the 1988 Olympic Gymnastics Trials coming up in August. Very, very good on bars. Reverse hat. Cast up to a handstand. There's her giant. Another giant. Now for a dismount. It's a Coleman each dismount. Melissa Marlowe. Melissa Marlowe. The uh, coach, uh, Bella Caroli, told me that um, there probably aren't any um, surprises out there. That uh, the people we're seeing here basically are our best and will comprise our Olympic team. Is that a fair assumption, Peter? Oh, I think it is. You have a handful of gymnasts that are out there that are training very hard for the 1988 trials. They're going to be there. They have a solid chance of making the team. But these gymnasts are here simply because they're the best right now. Another member of the 84 Olympic team, and still another on the team, trying to repeat again, would be Scott Johnson coming up. That's right. Scott will be performing on the rings of Lincoln, Nebraska. He's 26. Scott certainly uh, one of our best hopes right now in 1988. He's, he's improved. He was such a such a backbone for our team in 1984. He, I think, that Scott was the unheralded hero of our team. Scott was our leadoff man in many of the events, which meant he went out first. And it's tough to get a good score when you're the first guy up at times. And yet he got great scores and then helped to build a strong foundation for the rest of the scores that the team got, which was really a significant factor in our winning the gold medal. He deserves a lot of credit for that gold. Performing on the rings, which he uh, indicates are his favorite. Not, I mean, he's so powerful there. That was a kick to a planche, lower to an iron cross, kick out. Always steady on the rings. Well, hardly a waiver, Peter. Yes. So solid. He's one of the most solid ring performers in the world, no question. There's a giant right to a handstand. Another giant. That was a good save. It's a little bit off, and he had to save that right away. Back up rise. Now, Scott is one of the highest dismounts of anyone in the world. He really gets up there. He usually does a pike tap and half out. Here's his wind up. Giant dislocate. Beautiful pike tap and half out. Beautiful performance by Scott Johnson. He's from Olympic Wars. And hoping you make the team again in 88. We'll be back with more from Paul Pavilion right after this.
He likes reading science fiction. So now... Back to the balance beam now, as Olga Strasheva. Olga Strasheva. She's four foot seven, 15 years of age, and 87 pounds on the balance beam. Now, Strajeva did that very unique front tumbling pass earlier in the day, and balancing was certainly also one of her best events. She goes into a one-armed handstand. Look at that. Oh, a Healy twirl like you would see on the parallel bars. You know, Peter, I watched her warming up, and she was so intent and so serious just in warming up that I always thought from whom she was crying. You know, this is just this is just an exhibition, but they really do take it seriously. Every time they go out there on that floor, they're there to perform. This is an artistic sport. You don't just do the tricks. You do it well, you do it right, and you try to do it perfectly every time. And the Soviets place a lot of importance on perfecting those routines. It doesn't matter where they are. It's a beautiful back hamstring, back layout ball. She's only 15. Imagine the pressure on someone that young. They compete so much, though, that uh, they really mature beyond their years. They're under that pressure. They're in the spotlight all the time. There's a round off, double back flip. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Beautiful observation. on the beam. Four feet, seven inches of diamond. Beautiful. Here's that one-arm handstand. And that's a Healy troll, like the gymnast might do on the parallel bars, the male gymnast. That shows how the sport just overlaps all the time. Certain events that are done on the floor are done on pommel horse, and certain events that are done on the balance beam might be done on the parallel bars. Just very, very talented gymnastics. Vladimir Artinamov. Back with us now. We saw him on the ring in an earlier occurrence. Now he'll be operating on the parallel bar. He made another world championship last fall. Along with it, his very own gold medal. His ninth visit to the United States. Mr. Vladimir Artyomov. Disneyland is still his favorite city. Well, he's going there. His favorite food is spaghetti. Good carbohydrate meal. That was a beautiful peach basket doing the stand. Stutz hand. He just makes everything look so easy. He is he's a world champion on the parallel bars. Dismount. Double pike. Beautiful. Artyom. the Soviet Union, a world champion. We'll take a look at that dismount again. This is a back toss. This is a simple backflip in between the bars. Double pike. Look at him zero in on that ground. Ronda Fain. 16-year-old member of the United States team. This is Ronda Fain. Couldn't wrap it in a soda, but she was a, or is a native of Beautiful reverse hack. Pitches her grip, goes down to the low bar, kips up to the high bar. Giant. Full turn over the top. Very difficult, especially at the end of the routine. And just a flyaway discount. Didn't do that normal recommended discount. The routine itself is very, very good, but she thought, well, let's just save it. Well, the dismount just did this with Al Sassi. He just kept it on beautifully, though, Peter, just to follow. Been on USA Senior Team four years. She said it perfectly. We go back to Charlie Lakes now. On the 88 high bar, we saw him there at the high bars a few minutes ago. And that's my question. Charles Lakes. Here's Charlie Lakes again. And Charlie really knows how to take these flip catches up in the air. This is where you let go of the bar, do a flip, go way above the bar, and come back down to catch the bar. Here's his inverted giant. His stalder. One-arm giant into a hot pirouette sequence. It's very difficult. It's probably invented. Here's a very high front center side. And there's a beautiful reverse act. 
boy, Charlie isn't done because we saw him do a triple backflip. There's another one. Charlie Brown is the winner. Charlie Brown Beautiful exhibition by Charlie Lutz. There's got to be a, a high degree of uh, potential danger in that when you let go of it. And, huh? Hey, I'll tell you, when you're, look at this, when you're coming down to catch that bar and you're way up there and the bar's not there, that's a real disappointment because that's about a 13-foot drop to your stomach. We don't like it when that happens. <laughs> and yet, and yet, the mats are safe. If you land flat on the floor, it's a safe landing. It doesn't hurt. Anyway, <laughs> this is Miss Phoebe Mills. Next to the floor exercise. Ladies and gentlemen, Phoebe Mills. Our floor owner has a broken finger. You can see it taped together on her left hand. That's right. Now Phoebe did not compete at the USA USSR dual meet, so she's here just to give an exhibition. She did break her finger. She's the reigning American Cup champion. Really a very bright hope for 1988. See, now she's not really putting that hand on the ground. This is just kind of a fun routine to this. every moment of it. Now then, let's go to Peter She's and uh, conversation with Ms. She's great She's Peter? the toast of the European and Asian continents. On floor exercise, the final appearance today of Paulette Hansanova. Paulette Hansanova is back. Dazzled the crowd in two previous appearances. It is, of course, Paul Hunt, and he's a magnificent gymnast and quite a showman. Floor exercise this time. This is where he really, uh, or she really, shines, I guess. This is what gets the crowd going.
is a man the who whole is, uh, world is watching this one. He's methodically training after a major injury. Today is making his exhibition return at Tomahawk, one of the most beloved men in the sport of gymnastics. 1984, gold medalist, Jim Daggett. Jim Daggett! He's the bronze medalist in this event at Fire Horse. Back more up. Also, I was with my best friend, Mike Tewin, with the old son's name. There's this flare traveling across the horse. Actually, the king of flares in this country. Good flare, right up to a handstand for this man. Great routine. Team again, and you can see that uh, there's a little limp as he moves along. And let's call your attention now to our floor exercise here. Once again, we're going to be special guests. Peter Taylor. So we'll be seen in the motion picture Scrooge, starring Bill Murray. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mary Lou Stratton. Courage. And we wish him the very best. Is it on? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our next uh, competitor is the 1985 world champion, the 1987 world champion on this event. And floor exercise is a place where the female gymnast can really make her mark. You can express your tumbling abilities as well as your dance abilities and it gives us a, a chance to really express ourselves. I'm honored to again to introduce and also to meet her again who I've competed against many times. My friend from the beautiful city of Leningrad, Elena Shushanova.
right age? Is well, he... it's, it's a little bit old, but uh, but he just refuses to give up. I mean, he won this competition against the, the USA. He was the number one Soviet gymnast in the dual meet. He scored a 59.4. That averages out to exactly 9.9 .9 average. That is beautiful this time. Yeah. 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 The Russians of the United States, gymnastics at its best, not as special. As a member of this tournament, own bronze medal for a spectacular performance on balance beam. Now you know her at CBS uh, To continue, I thought a moment on Yuri Korolev. Uh, at 25, he doesn't want to quit. There was a time he didn't want to get involved. He just he missed all kinds of practice sessions and everything as a young kid. There's Kathy Johnson from the 84 Olympic team. Hello everyone. As Mary Lou said earlier, being here in Pauley Pavilion bring back some wonderful and incredible memories. We're watching some of the finest gymnasts in the world. Four years ago, my teammates and I did something that we will never ever forget. It's forever etched in our minds and in our hearts. But time goes on and gymnastics gets better and better as you can see here today. So the next best thing to being there for me is having the pleasure of introducing the next young lady. She was a Pan American gold medalist, one time national champion, and a teammate of mine at SCATS. And one of my dear friends, all my respect, please welcome on the floor exercise, Sabrina Marr. Sabrina 17, Huntington Beach. Sabrina was the finest finisher for the for the USA in this dual meet series that we had. Uh, she placed third all around and uh, really looked very, very sharp. She's had some back problems in the past, and she's just handled it very well. She just really great for 1984 Olympian, Tim Daggett. Well, it's really a pleasure for me to be back at UCLA. I never get here anymore. I'm usually here about three times a day. No, it really felt great to come out here and do a pommel horse routine because when you, if you saw a little while back on ABC Wild Water Sports, the last time I had that rush of adrenaline that excitement of competition, it was followed immediately by probably the worst thing in my life. And I bring that up because I draw a lot of my motivation and a lot of my spirit from the guy I get to introduce here. This is such an honor for me because he is known and respected throughout the gymnastics world as the premier gymnast for a lot of reasons. First of all, he won his first world title when he was 16 years old. That's pretty impressive right there. And secondly, because he had a major accident and had a major, major problem with his leg, a car accident that almost left him without a leg at all. 
and he came back in 1987 to be another world champion. It is my great pleasure and an honor for me and who I am drawing my energy for, for Seoul, Korea, to introduce the greatest gymnast in the world, Dmitry Bilozerchev. I don't think you can say much more about that. Dmitry Bilozerchev is certainly the, the number one gymnast in the world, even after that tragic injury. Beautiful one arm giant sequence. Look how extended he is. So one arm fly away half turn. Perfect catch. But he has just complete mastery of his skills. Beautiful reverse hack into immediate fly away half turn. Now, as you know, he has this bad leg. We put a softer mat down there. The number one of the best gymnastics in the United States, gymnastics from Pauley Pavilion, right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, to close our show, we would again like to present all the gymnasts visiting Los Angeles in the Vidal Sassoon Gymnastics Summit. It has been truly, I think, in all honesty, as we told you when it started, a most unique and certainly outstanding program. We hope we haven't gotten in the way too much of all of these outstanding gymnasts from the Soviet Union and, of course, the hopefuls for the United States. So let me hear. Back on the floor now to the applause of the crowd led by the Soviet women, the Soviet men, the United States women, the United States Gymnastics Federation and Vidal Sassoon, thank you for coming. And we hope to see you again soon. But first, before we leave you, our gymnasts have an extra special performance. Look at this. Back to the right in the row, all the way around the circle. This is great. <laughs>